Today we're taking a look at some ND filters for the DJI 03 system. Now these filters have been sent to me from Flywoo. I just want to say up front that I did receive them for free. However, they've not seen this video before it's been published and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Now what we're going to do in this video is just take a quick look at what you get in them. I'll give them a test. It is hard for me to test ND filters this time of year, but there are some specific things that we can take a look at. And then at the end, I will share with you my thoughts on not only the ND filters themselves, but the fitment and how I think they perform on the O3 system overall. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what you actually get in the pack. Okay, so as I've said, what we have here is an ND filter kit from Flywoo specifically designed for the O3 system. When you lift the lid inside, you'll find a cleaning cloth, you get some wipes, you actually get a nice lens filter so this is a uv filter and then you get your nd filters and polarizers now included in this kit is filters as follows we got nd4 nd8 and nd16 nd32 64 and then we've got a circular polarizer now nd wise that should cover 95 percent of people's use cases and if you don't know what the circular polarizer is for it's designed to cut light from different angles if you're flying over things like water and what it will basically do is stop reflections and make that water look nice and clear now, if you don't know why you may want an ND filter, the reason is as follows. Most cameras like the O3 camera on action cameras and drones do not have apertures. The way they control the amount of light that reaches the sensor is through the shutter speed. So for instance, on a very bright day, it will have a very fast shutter speed. However, that in itself can cause problems because there's a rule which is known as the 180 degree rule, which says you should try to keep your shutter speed twice your frame rate. So for instance, if you were filming at 30 frames a second, you would ideally want your shutter speed at about 60 or 1 60th of a second. However, the issue is when the system doesn't have an aperture, the only way you can control the light is by increasing the shutter speed and you'll find on a bright day that your shutter speed would be well in advance of a 60th. It would probably be many, many more times that. So the only way you can bring your shutter speed down is to reduce the amount of light entering the sensor and that's what an ND filter does. It's a neutral density filter. It is basically a set of sunglasses for your camera to reduce the amount of light entering it. Therefore, you're able to get a shutter speed then as close as possible to that 180 degree rule or the shutter speed twice the frame rate that you're recording at. The reason you're using this kind of filter compared to another one is that this kind of filter should not have any effect on the light. That's why it's called neutral density. It shouldn't change the light in any way. It should simply reduce the amount of it, making it through to the sensor. Now, the reason you want this 180 degree rule, or as I said, the shutter speed twice the frame rate, is that is what gives the most natural look to your footage. When your shutter speed is very, very fast, the image can be jerky, it cannot look natural, and you can even get jello in the footage in drones as well. So again, setting that shutter speed to twice the frame rate gives you the more natural look. But as there is no way to adjust the aperture on this, the only way we can do it is by putting a set of sunglasses over the lens, and that is what our ND filters are doing. Now to fit these filters on the camera is quite easy. You may not have noticed this, but there's actually a little notch in the top and bottom where the lens hood sticks out. These filters then have a little piece sticking out of the bottom. They have a hole in the top and the way they actually fit is by clipping into that notch at the bottom and then pushing over the lip at the top and then the filter is fitted. Now, you are gonna struggle to put these filters on these cameras without getting a fingerprint on them. If you're using filters for larger drones like the Mavic series, it is possible, but on these, with them being so small, the chances are you are gonna put some fingerprints on the front, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you bring that cleaning cloth with you so you can clean them off before you fly. But once they're fitted on, you can see it then covers that whole layer lens area no problem at all and then to remove them you simply just give it a bit of a tug at the top and it releases as easy as that. 
Next, I just want to show you some quick footage with the ND filters in action. Now, I'm not going to be showing you flights because, frankly, it is the wrong time of year for me to demonstrate what O3 can be like with ND filters. However, there are some things we can look at that do tell us about the quality of the filter. Primarily, we're looking for colour shift. A good ND filter should not shift the colours at all. That is why they're called neutral density filters. As I've already said, the idea of an ND filter is to reduce the amount of incoming light, but without artificially affecting that light, i.e. colour shifting or anything else like that. And then once we've gone through this bit, I'll share with you some thoughts at the end. Also, what I've done in this footage is left the camera in auto and at the bottom I'm showing you the camera boxes to show you the results of the ND filter, i.e. the effect that it is having on the shutter speed and the ISO. What you will see is as you move through the ND numbers, as we move up with more cut, you'll then see the ISO increase but the shutter speed come down as well. Normally, if you're using an ND filter, you would probably want to fix these but for this I just wanted to demonstrate demonstrate the effect that it will have on the incoming light level and that is reflected in the shutter and ISO output. Now the last thing I wanted to test for was vignetting because we know the O3 system has a very wide field of view when it's set to super wide. Here is the O3 camera looking at a blank white sheet of paper in super wide with the ND filter fitted and you can see that there is a small amount of vignetting around the corners. If we now move over to wide though you can see that the vignetting has gone and we're getting that full image without any effect of the ND filter on at all. Now having looked at this, I really don't think we can blame the ND filters from Flywoo specifically. This issue very much is down to the way DJI has designed the O3 system, how the lens is set up, how close that ND filter is actually able to get to that lens, and the fact that the super wide is extremely wide and you're always going to have issues with fitting filters in that mode no matter who they're made by. It isn't something I'm going to to say is bad as a result of this filter set. It's just a warning more than anything that if you're going to use the O3 system with super wide with ND filters, you are going to get some vignetting around the sides. Now, having spent some time looking at the footage, what I can say is I'm pleased with the way the ND filters perform. I'm seeing no form of colour shift as a result of using them. What you can see at times, especially when you go to higher ND levels, 32 and 64, you can see the colour start to shift, especially towards the reds or the greens, but we're not seeing that here. It's hard to say that the ND filters are very accurate in the sense of the ND level cut is correct, but what I will say is I'm seeing no problems with the filters at all, and I think what you're getting here is a nice set of filters if you're someone that is wanting to get that cinematic style of footage from your O3 system rather than using an action camera. Price-wise, these filters cost $59.99 for the full set that I've shown you here today, but you can also order the individual filters from them for around $13 each. So if you didn't want the full set, you can get them separately, or if you were to lose one, you can get an individual replacement. Overall, I think they're a nice set of filters. I see no reason not to be able to recommend them at all. I do like the way they do fit onto the camera. That wasn't something that I had spotted either in the past with regards to those little notches. When they're fitted, they do seem solid as well. Although, what I will say, I don't think they're going to hold up to too many crashes. But then again, you're not likely to be crashing if you're flying with ND filters. Overall, if you're looking for a set of ND filters for your DJI O3 system, they are available from Flywoo and there will be a link to them in the description of this video as well. I want to say a massive 
massive thank you to Flywheel for sending these over. Now, if you have found this video interesting and useful, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts as well. Please do let me know in the comment section. Furthermore, if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this, and whilst we did receive these filters for free from Flywheel, we do buy a huge amount of the products we talk about on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep being able to do that in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. It's only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you think we deserve your support, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.